Welcome back, and we've just had a fantastic game of musical chairs here, as you'll see in a minute when we take the wide shot. We've got a very special guest today. This is a man who was out there for 19 seasons, an amazing 401 games and four grand finals before giving it away at the end of 2013 with remarkably little fanfare. It's former AFL umpire Steve McBurney. Thanks for joining us, Steve. Great to be here, Rowan. Thanks. Now, I've got to start with an obvious one. How does it feel not to be universally hated anymore? Well, um, I still get it from the footy diehards. Uh, if I go to a footy game, um, most of the fans I go anonymous, but there's always that one who's been to the footy all his life and recognises me. And not only that, but they'll remember the one free kick against their team that they think cost them the game, the season and the grand final. Now, how many of them do you actually remember? You cannot remember every decision you no, have made. My, my memory's not great. Um, I remember my first game and I remember the occasional decision. Um, but yeah, the, all the games mould into one when you've done that many. All right, well, I'm going to let Finey loose on you. He loves his umpiring and controversy. Go on, Finey. I love umpires. I umpire. Uh, mm. First of all, I mean, you, when you started, Darren Goldspink was still umpiring? Yes, he was. Yeah. And when you finished, Ray Chamberlain was umpiring? Yes. So it, these are guys that really almost were magnets and attracted most of the fan hate. And yes. What, why is it that some umpires like the attention, almost like being the bad guy and draw it from the crowd, whereas others, I think the better umpires sometimes, are more anonymous. Funny, it's like any workplace or any football club, you have different personalities and some personalities are larger than life. From our point of view, Goldie taking the heat uh, was great for the group. It allowed me as a young umpire to just get in there and get some experience under my belt without too many difficulties. And I did a couple of games with him where I paid a couple of poor decisions and he got blamed for them. And I thought, <laughs> how good is this? Right. Um, but uh, what I know about both of them is they're both passionate about football. Yeah. And Darren Goldspink was the best decision maker I umpired with in all my career. You know, it's remarkable how often, it's just occurred to me then, because it happened the other week in the Hawthorne Adelaide game, and I think it was, um, is it Matthew Nichols? I always call him Simon Overland because yeah. he had an uncanny resemblance. But whenever there's a few controversial decisions, it always seems to be the same umpire and he's bobbing up in every part of the ground. Why is that? Well, it's a bit like cricket when you drop a catch, the ball just follows you. Yeah. Um, it's the same when you're having a bad day at the football umpiring. All the controversial decisions tend to happen in your zone and uh, mm. if you're in form it's not a problem if you're struggling to make the right decision you're not getting in best position and not seeing it then all of a sudden the wheels can fall off and the hardest thing in umpiring is to try and get the composure and the concentration back when you know you've made a really bad decision what have you made of the new rules this year and the interpretations for instance you know the deliberate out of bounds how tough is that one to yeah john i really like the yeah. deliberate out of bounds it's challenged the umpires and i think the trend over the first few rounds has been on their stats would show they've missed more than they've paid unwarranted and they're always looking for the balance they want to get every decision correct but their key performance indicators go down to how many have they missed in a category and how many have they paid that are incorrect. Now, the fact that they've missed more means that they haven't quite gone the full extent of being as strict as yeah. the laws of the game committee want them, but I think they've done a pretty good job on it. Um, and Friday night, we saw Bulldogs North Melbourne, um, one's paid on the wing, which is clearly wrong, where the player took possession. That was a Luke possession. McDonald one? Yeah. Yeah. McDonald's on the boundary line when <clears throat> yeah. he gets possession. Yeah. And just difficult for the umpire because he's inside a play and you can't actually see the boundary line that well mm. from your position. And so he read that one wrong. And then there was one paid later against Scotty Thompson, which I thought was a really good call by Troy Pennell. He had um, Del Santo near yeah. him. He could have tapped it to Del Santo. Scotty Thompson, if you check the stats, he's had more deliberate out of bounds paid against him than any other player in the history of the AFL. Really? AFL. I'm sure he has, because yeah. I paid at least 10 against him. <laughs> and you just know what Scotty's looking for. He's mm. looking for the boundary line. And I think if he taps it to Del Santo, there's no free kick. If he taps it close enough to Del Santo that Del Santo can touch it, there won't be a free kick. But he misses Del Santo. The ball goes over the boundary line. I thought it was a good call. Cool, yeah. I just reckon with the intentional... The umpires are almost getting killed by the word, word intentional because fans go, they, that's not intentional. Simple semantics. Can't we call it um, failure, uh, try, failure to keep the ball in play or 
A free kick if you don't endeavour or do your best to keep the ball in play. That's because a bit wordy. Well, what, I'm just saying the word. <laughs> no, I know what you're The word intentional is because people ring up, talk back. They're talking to me and goes, "How was that intentional?" Yeah. Mm. And it's really only the word rather than the intent of the new law. I think you've hit on a good theme. I think the laws of the game committee needs a lecturer in English, advanced English, to be <laughs> so able to articulate these that. rules better. Well, and I think you're right, Rowan. <laughs> um, but generally, John, I think that rule's working yeah. well and it's making for a better game. It's forcing the ball That's to stay exciting. in play and out of bounds is just dead time and no one goes to the footy to watch the boundary umpires throw it in. We go to watch the ball in play. Just as a follow up to that, and this is a bit of a hobby horse of mine admittedly, but I now feel that there's far too big a discrepancy between the deliberate out of bounds and the deliberate rush behind. Yep. Now, I love the way when deliberate rush behind first came in, whether by accident or design, I think players were so panicked about giving away freeze that they were trying to keep the ball alive at all costs. It's now got back to where it was at the end of 2008 before the rule was introduced, where short of handballing it through the goal from 20 metres out, you're just not going to get pinged. And I, I just think there's too big a gap between an interpretation this side of the point post and that side of the point post. What, what do you reckon? I, I agree 100%. I think that the... Uh, the rule needs to be looked at and the laws of the game committee is trying to give the defender an out mm. because they should be entitled to stop a score, a goal being scored, so they should be able to punch it through when the ball's going through. Um, but we don't give them the sanctuary of the boundary line anymore. I don't know why we give them the sanctuary of the scoring area. Mm. And I think um, it should definitely be put on the agenda for the NAB Cup. Let's trial a stricter interpretation around the scoring area and you'll go bad, back to that frenetic, chaotic desperation of defenders because they know they can't step back and they have to keep the ball in play and it just makes for much better football. Like yeah, that. I agree. Just quickly, how about the South Australian experiment? Yeah, so they've gone to not quite a last touched rule but if you kick or handball it out of bounds um, you'll be penalised and um, we're six weeks in so it's a small um, set of data so far but their, uh, d their out of bounds free kicks have gone up to five a match whereas in the AFL we're averaging less than two. Mm. Um, scoring's gone up and the early reports are it's worked really well. I haven't watched it yet, I haven't observed it in action. Um, they've tried to modify it so if there's a smother or a tap it's not paid deliberate. Yep. Um, but that's really the next step. So I think the AFL will study South Australia closely, see what effect it's having on the game, and then determine whether that's something they'd look at in the future. Look, they, they got the refund on the cans and bottles right. <laughs> yes. So we should do... I think we go South Australia. They're Very political today. Huh? Very political they're, today. They're, they're no, big on chicken garbage. salt too. Oh, what, yeah. what is it about the ads for chicken salt all over South Australian football ground? Who Bogans? were some of the players, Steve, who gave you the most lip? Oh, look, in the early yeah. days, it was uh, Gavin Krasiska, Steve Silva. <laughs> yeah. Gavin. Uh, Gavin, Gavin yeah. used to commentate the game. He'd be in my ear the whole time. And, that is great. And back in those days, um, there was a lot more interaction between player and umpire. The game wasn't quite as quick. But I remember Tony Shaw in one of my early games. He, he stared me before the first bounce, put his finger in my chest, said, you've got one thing to do today, and that's to bounce it straight with a few expletives thrown in. Yeah. <laughs> he was into us before the first bounce. I couldn't believe it. Um, nowadays, it's mm. the game's just so much quicker and more professional. Um, the players just don't have that time to have the interaction mm. with the umpires. But I, I tend to talk too much. I like to yeah. talk to players on the mm. field. So if Acca was playing or Fev yeah. was playing, it was great to have a chat. And really, the only couple of players still playing who are like that, Jack Revolt, mm. um, he just can't shut up. He wants to talk to you all the time about anything. And so some of the players are like that, mm. um, whereas others, uh, Rob Harvey, you'd just never get a word out of yeah. because he'd be busting his gut to get it to every contest and he'd be so committed to the game that the umpiring was the least of his worries. Just just on that thing about the, you know, Shorey coming out and jabbing his finger, I, I wonder sometimes whether it's got a little bit too precious the thing about demonstrative behaviour, because I saw uh, Michael Ferrito up on the Gold Coast the other week and he mm. sort of pointed at the boundary up, is that worth a 50? I think it is because um, Rowan, we don't care at AFL level, we mm. don't take that personally, that's not the issue. The issue is if Ferrito's allowed to do that to an umpire, 
what happens at junior level or finey in Ormond Reserves mm. is the player does that, but there's a bit more to it. And we need to protect that environment and set a standard for the junior levels. Um, and look, it's so rare now. We see it maybe once around yeah. where a free yeah. kicker or a 50s boat because they're so professional about it. But every now and then a player will go over the top. Look, I remember Martin Pike telling me to F off nine <laughs> times in 60 seconds. Really? And I paid a free kick of 50 and then he got a $5,000 fine. I was going to say, nine fifties, so that's about the length of two footy well, fields. You can only pay one and then you've got no option to report. Well, you, you paid a really controversial one and what could have been a really critical one, didn't you, against Darren Milburn yeah. before, before half time of the 09 grand final? Now, I, I've always wanted to ask something about well, this. Well, if, if St Kilda ends up winning that game by kick, which may have happened, yep. that would have been one of the most controversial free kicks in footy history. Yeah, it was. Look, you don't think about that. Um, you just automatically react to mm. what's in front of you. So I saw him abusing the goal umpire mm. um, and he claimed he touched the ball, which he hadn't, paid the free kick. And as soon as I blew my whistle, I then thought, hang on a sec, where's this free kick paid? And I realised I had to pay it on the goal line and a goal had just been kicked. So you, I didn't at the time appreciate, OK, it's a the double goal and that's, yeah. that's what's going to happen. But you got no choice once you do it and I remember walking off the ground after the game and it goes through your head have you done the right thing and the first person to speak to me in the rooms was Adrian Anderson to say look we were really happy you paid the free kick it doesn't matter that it's grand final day if we see that we need to penalise it. You know why he was happy you paid the free kick? Why is that? What, what happened three minutes earlier? The uh, Hawkins kicked it into the post. Oh, that was up the other end, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. See, we missed that. And that was when we don't have the fantastic camera angles we do now, goal line technology to pick those things up. That's with like, the good angles. Yeah, that's right. Wait for the red. So you, you were unaware of that. I'm pretty sure that replay only came up like a, a good minute after it happened. Yeah, we yeah, we, we got asked about it at half time. So yeah. at the time it happened, we had no idea. Yeah. Um, and... Um, I think you can see someone <coughs> pointing at the post on the replay. Mm. I was up the other end. Uh, goal umpire, unfortunately, just got it wrong and has had sleepless nights ever since. And that white paint on the ball didn't give it away? <laughs> <the word? laughs> well, I was going to say, that, that basically sparked the introduction of, of the goal reviews in some form. Isn't it great that seven seasons later we still can't afford a GoPro to stick on the goal post at certain grounds? They've got to improve that, don't they? Uh, they Settle. do. I've, um, Rent. I've watched a lot of American sports. <laughs> And if you watch any NBA game and their use of technology, it's out of this world. Yeah. And there's no controversy because they get it down to the perfect angle. Um, they've got a smaller arena, obviously, but they just do it so well. And um, we've now been struggling with technology in the AFL for too long, especially at grounds like Geelong and Gold Coast. And it's um, something that really needs to be addressed. Are, are four field umpires needed? I, I don't see a problem yeah. with three. I think three does very well it's really about what benefit do they get from four yeah. with four umpires they can bring in umpires who can't bounce the ball and they wouldn't be required to bounce because you can cover it with the other okay, three yeah. you it's, can't do that with three someone always has to come into the middle yeah. very quickly fine uh, something happened two weeks ago and I reckon we've got no media you mentioned it when you came on radio with me hmm. we had a pretty significant moment with an emergency we were one injury away from history yes yeah, Alini Glufsis uh, was emergency for St Kilda Bulldogs and that's the first time we've had a female field umpire emergency. Mm. Um, I've got a scoop for you. She will be doing the TV game this Sunday on Mother's Day for the VFL mm -hmm. um, and that's again another great achievement on the stepping stone for her and she's just made enormous strides and um, the bottom line with Alini is she's a really good umpire and that's why she's been able to make it to senior footy in South Australia and Victoria and she's potentially a year away or a hamstring one, away from one, doing an AFL game. One in the calf, one run into a player and we had a female umpire at an AFL game. Well I'm sure there's plenty of people who'd be happy to help out injuring an umpire so she could get a gig. We <laughs> just need to have her emergency <laughs> for games with Chris Donlan. Ray Chamberlain and Shane McInerney, they're the three most prone to injury and come off. And if we can get her to emergency for them, then um, we're one injury away from history. There's a plan. Why have I got the song of three blind mice running around in my head <laughs> when I heard those three? Uh, thanks for joining us, Steve. It, really fascinating chat. Bloody annoying, though, when you want to hate umpires and then someone like you comes on and you find out you're actually a pretty good bloke. Look, thanks for joining us. We really appreciate it. And... Uh, 
Good luck to you and to the men in not white. High vis. Orange. Lime yep. green, orange. High vis lime. What? High vis. Yeah, high Any vis lime. wiggles colour you want. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>